transgressive and transformative learning is a form of social learning uh, that can happen in schools and, and universities, but it mostly happens outside of traditional education spaces. We've kind of cauterized knowledge to only exist, or lobotomized knowledge to only exist in institutions. And so we're looking at multiple forms of knowing. And why we call it transgressive and not just transformative is that it's um, often transformation requires challenging the norm. So we could define transgressive learning with a particular definition, but that would um, kind of be against the idea that there's multiple forms of knowing. So we have multiple forms of definitions of transgressive and transformative learning. So it's more helpful to have descriptors. So it's learning that's empathetic, it's learning that's um, challenging uh, traditions, uh, dangerous traditions or um, uh, hegemonic ideas and thinking. And it can be seen as like revolutionary learning or learning for activism. Um, so it can be applied in activism, in change practices, in farming, to um, learning that could happen in political systems and how we could transform them. So it's kind of the learning we need to accelerate our transformation towards sustainability, considering the hot mess we're in. And I'm working on transgressive and transformative learning in various sustainability projects in nine different countries around South Africa. And, but I also do work around uh, creative social justice and environmental justice, working with arts-based methods, and mostly theater and um, visual arts and social sculpture. And I'm very interested in empathy and the role empathy plays in transformation and transgressive processes. I think arts and creativity has every, everything to do with transformation. I, I don't think um, we can do any of this work without art and creativity. We end this mess precisely because we put art in a ghetto somewhere far away from how we lived and, and breathed and experienced the world. I mean, our first forms of understanding the world came from arts-based work. So um, I think, and if you think about the great innovators of our time, they were artists as much as they were scientists. So uh, in my personal experience, I found the power of theatre to be extraordinarily useful in immersive, empathetic reflexivity or re reflecting in communities that can change very hard, static paradigms. And Joseph Boyce, who's an incredible artist and social practitioner in the 70s, called art warmth work in the same way that you can hold a wax of a candle that's very hard, but if you apply enough warmth, it could become plastic. I think art and, and images and aesthetics, what Susie Gablix calls connective aesthetics, allows us to warm up. So art also allows us to answer the questions of what needs warming up. And if we can warm up certain things, our economic system needs warming up, um, we can, politicians need warming up, art allows us to disrupt that. And that's the other thing that's so vital, is that it's a disruptive pedagogy, it's a disruptive form of learning, because it opens up new space for thinking and feeling together. I think to get wider acceptance of transformation and transgression in the in the world at large or in communities at large is that we have to meet people with the knowledge that they currently have um, and not think it's not about teaching people anything I think what we have to learn is that we need to create spaces for people to enter these questions and these processes from the knowledge systems that they exist in and build from there um, if you can work from that point you can then start seeing what structural systems are not including them or making the change not possible or, or reducing their capacity for their knowledge to be expressed. Oh, I would like to see so many things in the future when it comes to transformation. Um, I'd love to see a, a viable, interesting conversation and maybe actions around a 
degrowth or post-growth movement in our economics. And I would also like to, um, to see art and images being something that we carry with us and use to communicate, not just language. I think that um, part of our problem is that we're thinking too logically and images and our dreams and the, the internal worlds that we carry could maybe help us with a lot of the blockages we've, we've had. And then the third thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see all education being environmental education. The problem we are in is because economists know nothing about ecology. And if, they, if we were teaching, we're not looking, our drive for knowledge wasn't just the search for a single truth, but our drive for knowledge was for matters that concerned us and that had purpose and finding human dignity and multi-species flourishing, we might have a completely different system.